I guess we're going to start. So you want the door closed? Yes, yeah, please. Close okay. It's an open meeting. Oh, you want me to leave it open? Well, no. it'd be better if you close it because we're trying to get sound, yeah. sound to stay in here for a job. That's better. Okay, so uh, welcome to the special board meeting. Uh, we're going to start out with an agenda topic of uh, some board conversation. And then we've got two motions. Yeah. One motion. Two, two motions. Uh, to go through, which I don't have a copy of. If somebody can give me a copy, of them. I didn't print everything this morning. I have only have electronic. Okay, so uh, if you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, so the topic of the day is something known as uh, the Corporate Transparency Act, which is of concern to uh, directorships throughout the country, uh, particularly condo. Uh, groups that have uh, questionable spending patterns. So the purpose of the CTA really is, is uh, it's an attempt by the government to um, rein in anybody who is trying to launder money, anybody who's trying to help terrorists, anybody who's try, trying to do something really illicit that affects the government with uh, moving cash around you know, in uh, obfuscated ways, right? so hidden ways. Unfortunately, when the law was uh, the law was crafted, um, it followed some corporate um, legal precedents and directorships. And what it has done inadvertently, it has sucked in every HOA, unless a specific HOA has been chartered under a 501c charter. Uh, it's everybody. Only 501c chartered homeowner organizations are exempt. And to my knowledge, we are not a 501c. So every, every director uh, everywhere uh, has got some new filing requirements in a horrendous overreach of the federal government in trying to enjoin us in this, uh, in this mess. <coughs> Initially, it sounds very benign. The filing requirement is um, by the end of the year, everybody has to post name, rank, and serial number, okay? Name, social security number, where you live, and send them a copy of photo ID, passport, driver's license, some government issued credential. That has to be sent to the government. The penalty for not doing so is extremely disproportionate to failing to send name, rank, and serial number, which already exists throughout many, many government records, certainly the tax offices, right? So I have to look at that, and everybody here has to look at that that's on the board and say, how can, the, how can there be uh, penalties up to $100,000 at the top end, three and a half years in, in prison for failing to send name, rank, and serial number? I don't get it. But I know it's an overreach, and I know the questions and the information that has to go in will not stop there. That's my feeling. I don't know that for a fact, but. That's public opinion on a lot of websites that are talking about this. This is the buzz on many websites. If you, if you just punch in CTA, you don't put it, need to put any more than CTA in a Google search pattern, you will be overrun with articles about what this is about. And if you type in FinCEN, F-I-N-C-E-N, that is uh, the branch of government that is chartered with bringing criminal charges against people who violate these new regs about Corporate Transparency Act. So there's a, there's a whole branch to get dedicated to prosecuting people to violate this. Uh, perhaps they'll ferret out a few people that actually send money to the terrorists in some sloppy way. Maybe they're gonna find some money that are wandering their bookmaking operation. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna find in HOAs. And how can it be significant in terms of the federal government. If you took all the HOAs together, I gotta believe that 95% of them are pretty honest. What kind of money are we talking about? 
It's ridiculous to me. That's just me. Let everybody else make up their own mind on it. Um, but that, in a nutshell, is the discussion topic of um, what the CTA is. And I'll just open it up. To, this is a board discussion, so um, the board will commence its discussion. Uh, who wants to go first? I guess me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bad name. I've read up on it. I, I've watched the video link that was shared. Um, I was surprised after the video link that Jason had given us some additional information that it was perhaps a lot more invasive, if that's the right word, than we thought. Capital letters. Yeah. Um, I'm of two minds about it. One is they already have the information they're looking from us. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a money launderer. In that way, it doesn't matter to me. On the other hand, um, and I'm, I don't consider myself a, a radical, but I'm tired of the government getting involved in people's lives in ways that I don't think they should. Uh, I mean, the presumption for us, our board is probably pretty typical of boards. We're all volunteers, we give a lot of time, we do a lot of work, we do it for good reasons. I don't think we need to have like that stigma hanging over us that you know we have to account for the actions of maybe 0.01% of people who might be doing something illegal. So at this point, if you put it in front of me, I'd be inclined not to sign it, which would probably result in me having to resign from the board because I don't want to expose myself to the penalties. I just want to make a comment on, on your closing there. Uh, it may be too late to resign from the board because the law, the law, went, in, the law went into effect January 1 of 2024. And if the language I'm reading is if you're, if you're in the board now, you ain't out. The only, way you, the only way you really are out is if you're not elected again. So, um, so to be elected again, you would have to run again. So there's a lot of decisions to be made there. There is a train of thought that actually resigning is not good for the associations, association's members, nor, nor, for, nor for the people who are the directors resigning, because there is potential for personal liability because of failure to execute fiduciary responsibilities. It's, uh, to me, it's a bit of a reach also, but that, uh, that editorial is out there in a lot of corners. Uh, so. Um, I'm not, I don't want to quash anybody's plans for resigning. <laughs> no, I'm not, but, no, no, but we need to be careful with that notion. Yeah. No, let me let me be clear. I'm not I'm not resigning. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm, I need more information. I sent in the CAI letters. I think a lot yeah, of us yeah, did, yeah. hoping that the legislature or the governor, well, well it's federal governor. I'm sorry. I, I'm hoping that somebody, which actually gives me less confidence. But, um, <laughs> I'm hoping that somebody will do something to alleviate what really is a ridiculous overreach. You know? So I'm not resigning. Um, however, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people in this room who are volunteers and give a lot of time. And it's just, uh, it's just, it's just hitting me the wrong way. You know, I mean, wh why are we, people like us, why do we have to be subject to something like this? And I don't have a billion dollars offshore, you know, so. Um, if it comes down to not running again, I guess I would have to make that decision at the time. Well, it's well let's, let the, let the board go through this time. I would like to see, I, I would like to have see what Eric says as far as what the exact information that we would need to do as far as I agree, and, and Eric is preparing that. When, yeah. we, when we had the meeting, uh, the last meeting about the statute mm -hmm. changes in Tallahassee, yeah. um, I was sitting right up front. Eric was there, and I, th I think we actually had concluded the dialogue about the uh, statutory changes. Mm -hmm. But I, he was at the podium, and I, I just looked at him, and I said, what are we going to do about CTA? Yeah. And I don't know how many people were here in the room, but uh, he said, yeah. And he, he gave me that look like, <laughs> yeah, it's a bad thing, right? <laughs> So um, he said he would be preparing, um, he was gonna be 
researching and preparing whatever documentation uh, board members would need to uh, execute um, to satisfy the requirements of the law. Yeah, because I think um, and I, I believe uh, he's still of that vein now. Mm -hmm. uh, subsequent to that conversation with Eric, uh, you may have seen something directly that came to board members from uh, Associate mm -hmm. about a tool for keeping track of uh, people who have to file, keeping track of their records, and getting the forms in place to provide name, rank, and mm -hmm. zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's money in this. And it's not for us. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the lawyer is going to make a killing on this, mm -hmm. and the and the people that are going to handle data are going to make a killing on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's just so. another website yeah. that they're going to charge you for. To yeah. put in, the, you know, to keep yeah. track of the information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then I, I want to do while I'm speaking. Let me just say this: there was a court case in March, um, a high-level court overturned uh, the government's right to enact this. And that case prevailed. However, I'll point out, as has been pointed out all across the internet, that case only applies to the four participants that are named in there. This is, it doesn't set a precedent. It has to be retried as a class action suit by someone. That someone currently is the Small Business Administration, <clears throat> has filed suit and is going to pursue this as an overreach of the government and something that has to be amended because it's just completely ridiculous. It just is making work for a bunch of bureaucrats. And once they start exploring, residents are going to be paying for it. All the time that has to be sent to satisfy, spent by us, directors, is going to be paid for by the people that pay assessments. You, me, them, all the people are going to be paying for the legal actions and the time away Maybe have to get extra staffing. Uh, we'll see where this goes. Name, rank, and serial number is just the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion. I'll go to as far as the uncomfortability of not knowing. I mean, I don't have offshore accounts and, and whatnot, and um, I file taxes properly. But um, <laughs> don't we all? Right? <laughs> and knowing that, I want to. Including what Joanne said, we want to find out some more information from the lawyer. That's what I was going to ask as far as how he's going to put it there. Yeah, we do. I think all of us want to get information from the lawyer, but the information is is uh, it's it's like looking through muddy water. It is uh, and some of it is contradictory. Some of it you can't figure out whether you're in this group or that group and what's needed. And there is most of the stuff that comes off of FinCEN's website and comes off the CTA websites. Um, it just throws a line in at the bottom and it says, well, this, th there'll be more requests for information. I don't know, I tense up when I hear there's gonna be more requests for information because all you wanna do <laughs> is put people in prison for name, rank, and serial number. And now there's gonna be more questions. Well, what does FinCEN do? They follow the money trail. And how are they gonna follow the money trail? They are gonna look at everything that you put on a tax return. And then the questions will start. And then they're going to go through corporate papers. And then the questions will start. So we're, we are working with the lawyer to uh, tell us what to do. Unfortunately, the uh, time is uh, yeah. minimal. We, here we are in uh, September going to October. And this is required. Filings are required by the end of the year. The good thing is many associations are going to struggle with this particularly associations that are really large and have a, have a lot of membership and a, and a lot of you know, sub-directors for that community, this community, and a master board. That, those operations are gonna struggle. Lots of names to keep track of. Corporations could have hundreds of names they have to collect and send in because they got all directors of this and that division and that division and that division. So um, for us, it's probably two dozen names that have to be accumulated and sent in. The uh, Sending in can be facilitated by somebody like a lawyer or associate with their database, uh, but the obligation and responsibility for sending in is the person that is the director. Right. That who ultimately will pay the fine or go to jail and try prison food. But I am just uh, 
concerned about. I have great respect for Eric. I always had have. The board knows that. Uh, but I don't know that he's in the short time frame that the information he's going to be able to give to us will be that clear and certain that it, we would be able to act on it with a lot of confidence. I'm sure he'll do his very best. I guess the other thing I left out is if we don't have a board, how does that affect the community? And that's in the back of my head, of course, because I think that could be an outcome for some HOAs. You know, I, I don't know what would happen, but it, I just, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, that's, that's my stuff. It's not a good thing. Yeah, let's do the board member stuff. So, um, I guess it's my turn. Um, I've watched these types of things transpire over the years. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind there could be no innocent reason for this. They know our names. They know our serial numbers. The purpose of this is to get the boards to resign. The purpose of this is for our government to gain more control over our housing so that they can move people in that we don't want to move in. That's the purpose of this. It might not be specifically towards our community, but it's probably for other communities around the country. And that's the purpose of this. And you're right, they're gonna get their nose under the tent, and then they're gonna, okay, this year, you're gonna to have to report X, Y, and Z. And next year, you're gonna to have to report A, B, C. So I am completely against this, but I will share a little story with you. I had breakfast with a congressman not too long ago, and I told him something that he was not aware of. And the congressman are the people that can change this. Yeah. The only people. So they don't know, they, they never even thought. They're currently uh, putting out uh, a bill to research cures for Alzheimer's and dementia. And I said, how about we go after the cause? What are the causes? What are the causes of Alzheimer's and dementia? There's a lot of, a lot of science out there. And by the way, a week later, RFK came out and talked about that very thing. Now my point of mentioning that is this congressman did not know, didn't even think about that. So I wonder how many congressmen actually know about this. And if we're gonna go against this at all, that's the angle we need to chase. Get Congress aware of this, get them aware of the unintended consequences, which is basically the boards are all going to resign, and then the government's going to gain control of housing in, in HOA type environments, condo type environments. Just my opinion. Thank you. On the right side, there. I have some questions. So you said the, there's an SBA class action suit, or currently there's an SBA class action suit in motion. I I don't know the progress of it. it it's not. So, yielded a result. So isn't the SBA part of the federal government? It, it's the Small Business uh, yeah, Owners right. Association. It, it's, it's not, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's not a legislative oh, it's not a oh, it's a government commission. Yeah. It, it's the, uh, you know, the lobbyists. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Heather, the, uh, the information that we got from Associa implied there was going to be a charge for that tool. $500. $500 per Ahead. person? Annually. The way I read it, it's annually for the whole board, but I can make sure to follow. Oh, for the whole board? For, for each board? In, in, individual? It but, would be each board, yes. The, well, that's the way I took it. Master, patio, villa. Okay. So we're responsible? And, 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 I, and you can choose, You have, everyone has to choose to opt in or out by the end of this month. Board. We'll have to opt it as a board. So, so we need to make a decision by the so end of So we'll have to be, each uh, board will have, so, yes. Okay. To use that tool. To whether or not to use a social okay. tool. So, 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 
Mike, you understand that we need to hire somebody to write in name, rank, and serial number on a piece of form. There's more to the form. Okay. I haven't personally seen it, we but that, that Associa is offering to do it, like I said, with the information can, included can in the board it, packet. Get Associa to give us more information before we sign on to this, before we make a decision? Okay. I mean, what, what information would we need to provide? Um, but I know when Eric was here, he also said that he would be able to do it if we're not more comfortable the, with not Eric. In a month. Well, no, we just have to decide whether Associa is going to do it or not by the end of the right. month. We don't have to do it by the end of the month. Well, still like to know what I'm getting for my $500. <laughs> um, also, I assume from that, Associated plans on doing their part in filing, right? Because it has to be a done for, the, for them also, right? right. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if there wasn't at least some banking information on there. You know, what bank do you use? Well, those, those, that part about there would be other requests for information. Yeah. That's at the bottom of most of the articles. Mm -hmm. Hold the thought. Yeah. Yeah, from the from the video that you sent out, it looked like there was like four pieces of information. Being, seemed pretty innocuous, but uh, now now I'm not so sure. Sign here. <laughs> Sign here. We'll, we'll let you know. Well, if we need to hire somebody to, to fill out the forms, it must be a little more complicated than name, rank, and serial number. Well, I think it's more about securely it. storing data and, and making sure tracking everything. But yeah. So in, in uh, Associates' defense, not that they need defending, is you skim the, the world of the internet. There's a lot of associate. Uh, there's a lot of associates out there by different names that do the same thing Associate right. does for us. They're all queuing up to, to sure. track the information and, and do that. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a profit center form, uh, just holding data, but they certainly have the means to do it. And they, they have then the responsibility for getting the filings done. So uh, Eric also has that. Uh, and then for me, it's a question of um, name, rank, and serial number is certainly published. Mine is certainly published all over the internet. Uh, but it's any of the downstream disclosures that I worry about because those will go all over the internet eventually too if they're not protected under FOI. Anybody wants a FOI could have a field day. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> well, that, that, that was uh, one of the frequently asked questions, I think, that was in there. And it did say it is protected against FOI, but I don't believe it. That didn't appear in the that yeah I saw that that didn't appear in early articles. It, that was um, a big red flag for a lot of people at first because they didn't talk about FOIs at all. Uh, and now I, I see the more recent article is, is uh, said it's 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 uh, in fact I, I think there's a series of meetings going on currently trying to decide who should have an FOI. And the short list was a litany of all government agencies and other associations. And, you're right. Yeah. It's overreach. It has a purpose. I want. I want only the best hackers to be able to get into this information. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't want some guy with uh, just walking down the street some, with his phone. Some the federal government is not safe. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I agree with everything that's been said. We need to hear from Eric. I remember him at the orientation meeting when you brought it up. He said, "I will tell you that if legislation doesn't change by October first, you've got to do it." So these are just my personal feelings. I don't know enough about CTA <coughs> to comment, except that I agree it is an overreach. My term is up in February. I'm pretty sure I would not run again if this legislation was put in place because I've been doing the Treasury for about seven or eight years. A lot of my personal information goes out there already because I sign checks personally sign checks as the treasurer. My social security number as a signer has to be given up um, every time we move our bank or banking. Sometimes it's sent through eDoc, sometimes it's not. eDoc is one of the most secure ways to send stuff like that. My driver's license is on file, I'm fingerprinted. The attorney has done, I believe, That's background checks on us, don't know for sure, but I'm pretty well known as the treasurer for the HOA, and I've given up a lot of information, and I'm really not willing to give up much more at this point. Mm -hmm. To be a volunteer um, at a place where I live. 
I, would, I wouldn't give it up if I was paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, sometimes if you're paid, you do have to give up some information. But that's not the case here. This is this is really going to affect our HOA and what happens if there's no board members. Well, the state of Florida is going to come in and take over the HOA, and it's going to cost everybody a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, that will not be my guiding light to run or not run again. It's my personal information um, being put out there. Or it elevates my risk of being sued. We're already under a microscope as board members. We carry insurance to protect us should something like that happen. Now we're risking, I'm risking more. No, I'm not willing to do that. What I would add to that, Joanne, is treasurer and as past president, our names are on bank accounts. Um, licenses. Yeah, licenses. I mean, they are, they're already there. We already have a degree of exposure, if that's the right word. Yep. You know? um, so this just compounds it. Um, uh, I will say, my last comments on it. Um, a lot of people know, I don't, I don't want to turn this into a political discussion, but a lot of people know I'm a kind of an avid reader of history. Uh, and you know the old we the people uh, well that's what the document is talking about we are the government that's why I look at we are the people and at some point we've lost a lot of that or it's been taken away whatever however you want to look at it but I feel like at some point you have it is just my makeup maybe my age the idea about it, at some point that you have to resist you know and I'm tired of I mean, every, I, think, I think it's fairly safe to say, especially since I know some people here, we, we are the rule followers. You know, we follow the rules. Oh, you know, and I've always felt angry at any level of government that looks to hold 99% of the rule followers responsible for the 1%. I, I really take, I've always taken that back, you know. Um, so that's just another part of it for me. So maybe emotionally, I'm a little bit overreacting to it, but I, I just don't feel good about it. I think it's just ridiculous. And I don't want the exposure that Joanne referenced to that we may or may not have. And we're running up to October, yeah. you know? Yeah. What is it now? I don't know what they <laughs> September 9th. Yes. Making speeches, I don't even know the date. But, <laughs> That's not that far away. And I, I, I'm, I have a hard time seeing, like if Eric says, you gotta sign. I, my level of confidence in that, and not in him, but in what's available to him. He's gonna give us his best opinion, right? Like any lawyer's gonna do. But it's gonna be up to us as individuals whether we wanna accept that. So that's all I have to say. I wanna bump together in a cell? <laughs> you and me? <laughs> <laughs> you beat me in every game. I mean, chess game, every game. <laughs> all right, so that's what I was. I, I'd be very interested to see what other uh, HOAs are thinking about yeah. this. And the reason I say that is because I've been in similar situations with organizations. And uh, if a few organizations get together and, and hold the line, you'd be surprised how much power you have. You okay. say, no. Not doing it. Sorry. <laughs> if, if you're a follower of the CAI, um, they're doing a, a big class action. And there, there's a, a few others that are like the Community uh, Association Institute. Institute. There's a few others like that that are all doing their own version of a class action suit. So there, there are forces mounting against it, but are they going to be in time? Yeah. Right? The, the, pro the problem is this may well get overturned, but it could be 2025 when it gets overturned. The failure to file still hangs, still looms for everybody when you cross into January 2025. <coughs> okay, we worn this uh, bone down. Yeah, I think forward, forward. Yeah, coming. I just have a um, quick question, and maybe a, a suggestion. We all know that ignorance of the war is no excuse, but if this went into effect January 1st, why is it just coming to light now? It came to light. This came to light in 2022. And in 2023, uh, it was uh, got more, it was initiated like in 2022. 
2023, uh, they started forming thoughts around it. Um, and there's some interesting conversations that were being held in places that I came across while I was searching. So uh, this was thought out uh, a while ago. But in the early part of this year, uh, I'm going to say that it was March that started running across all these CTA articles and um, <coughs> boards that were threatening to quit. All this was going on. Now, CAI has been, um, had many, if, I don't know if you read the CAI stuff or if you remember that, but it, it's, been it's, been tossing, it's been tossing articles out uh, pretty much every month. So lack of awareness, uh, I don't know how that happens in an issue like this that's at everybody's heart. Uh, and it's being tackled by so many organizations. <laughs> and I will say, uh, I've written a lot of uh, letters. I've filled out computerized forms to go. And now I'm happy to say I have a full mailbox of politicos seeking <laughs> contributions. Not one of them in the letter that they send back talks about CTA. All they talk about is they did this and they did that. They'll continue to do this and that. But not a one has sent back a letter that talks about CTA, to your point. They, they, some of them, I don't think they even know, as you said. Yeah. So it seems like everybody's been saying that we have to give name, rank, and serial number. I think I would make a suggestion. I think all the boards should have a special meeting with the attorney or maybe the associate and find out exactly what we have. Well, they, I think we stated that. Yeah. I think, that's a good idea. I think I think that's being planned, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it was in motion the, the day we left the statutory meeting. <coughs> it was in motion with Eric because I had the conversation with him right up yeah, here at the right table. I remember that. Yeah. All right, so um, it's it's out there. That's all, all I can say. There you go, bunk mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn on top. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying, Jason? Even if we resign, that doesn't that doesn't get us out of this? No. No, they did not after the president. They're after all of you. It's, they're after me too. But anybody, remember, the term president, vice president, whatever, is somewhat <coughs> irrelevant because that's a temporary position. The What matters is that you are a chartered director of the corporation. And, uh, you know, I always stress in things, remember, folks, we are a corporation. And Corporations have a certain way they have to act, right? You have, you have a lot of fiduciary responsibility that you can't turn your back on. Sometimes we may treat that a little casually, um, but always uh, we work it out to the best intent for the good of the community. Uh, but it's easy to misstep that uh, or find an agency that wants to look over your shoulder and um, show, me the, show me the minutes of the meeting where you made the decision to do that. Joanne, why did you choose to invest in that bank and not this I'm bank? I'm going to jail with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they have another building. <laughs> but that's what, it, that's what it can lead to, a bunch of challenging. Well, why'd you, why'd you go to that bank instead of this one? You, know? you move money a lot, Joanne. <laughs> I do. These, these are kind of questions. I do. <laughs> yeah. I have a but, question. Who controls the information that we have right now as a supply of year for the state? You mean like the... Sunbiz, Suzette does that. Su Suzette. Suzette. Uh -huh. well, Suzette. Suzette. So your control of the information is supplied to the state. What's the additional information that they're asking for the government? We don't know yet. Yeah. It's name, rank, and serial number. You got a social security number, you got a name, you got an address, and you must have something with your yeah, picture I'm issued by a state agency. License, passport. Isn't that available for them already? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that was. Good point. That's our point here. <laughs> it's more obvious. <laughs> the penalty for not giving out name, rank, and serial number is significant fines of the individual who hasn't complied, and the threat of incarceration. It, it, the name, rank, and serial number. Just keep saying that to yourself and say, why are the fines out of sight and why is the jail time a threat to volunteers? Russ, I think I think Joanne sent you that link. Right. Right. I don't know if you watched it or not. No, I didn't. So the, the lawyer who's just kind of blowing it off nonchalant, right? right? But his first statement is, well, this was meant for the government to prevent money laundering, terrorism, right. yada, yada, yada. They can do all of that now. 
kind of on any of us, mm -hmm. you know. So, and I don't think we're going to be the ones, you know. But, but I mean, again, when when it's so obvious up front, it, there there are underlying motivations and purposes and intents. That's the way you have to look at it. Yeah. Anyway. I, Everybody should watch Dr. Zhivago over the year. <laughs> remind you about how evil the government has become. Yeah. Well, can't we just tell them you already got the information? Just find it. <laughs> the old. <laughs> Checks in the mail? Yeah. Because you your information's it. going too, Deb. <laughs> oh, well, mine's been there because being in the military, they took name, rank, and serial number from the get go. <laughs> and every time I moved. <laughs> you know, uh, Joe was saying it is perfectly true. Uh, they're just trying to eliminate boards of all, all rank and file throughout the whole country. And eventually the government wants to just take over everything. And especially with this excess of just outside people that are in our country right now, you know, they've got to find room for these people someplace. So they're spreading them around all over the place. And you're putting people like you people that are, that are volunteering your time and services to help a community in a hot spot because the way you're describing this, I mean, you're, you're gonna have no one wants to run for any of these boards at all. I mean, you can't get them to run for the committees now, let alone the board. <laughs> and, um, you know, especially if you're gonna hold this threat over their heads. And, and if, if this goes nationwide, which is obviously what it is, I mean, I can't believe that other communities, just like we are, there, there isn't a big outpour of, of Resistance to the saying, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, we're being sure there are. You know, this, sure this is going. kind of this is yeah. really has kind of slipped in very quietly. It's not, and, exactly. and I, I really didn't like your comment. <laughs> not that I, I didn't like it. I didn't like to hear that these congressmen don't know what it is. I mean, where are you guys? This yeah, stuff is all over. Exactly. You know, that's the problem with all these uh, agencies. They're right. all running the government, and the congressmen just. Yeah, just send money. Oh, yes. Give us, send me money. That's yeah. right. They have their priorities as to what they're looking for, you know. And yeah. the number one priority is the money. You know, I mean, it's no different when you get your AR, AR, you know, AAP and you know, all that stuff that they want. Your your opinions as to what's what what the government's doing and everything. And that bottom line, how much are you going to send to me? You know, and if you don't send, you keep sending it back. You know, wanting to know why you're not contributing. That's the bottom line of it. But they're you know they, they make it look like you know they're really interested in your say and what you have to do. But, Getting back to what you guys are in, um, I feel for you. I really do. I mean, I, that scares the heck out of me. And I mean, I, I know how it is just for our sake doing anything. You know, when you're putting anything, first thing they want to know is your social security number. And you just read about scams and things like that that are taking place throughout this whole country. It's just like a scam world now. And uh, uh, this is almost like a, a scam that's actually being presented by the government that's uh, really trying to. Put the you know the crimp to you guys because like you say the first thing you're gonna ask for is your tax returns that's number one you know and I mean you're giving every information you possibly can have it, it's scary I, I I really do have my sympathy completely and uh, it scares me you know I mean I know my age and stuff like that we, we don't have that much time anymore but I mean God Almighty what's gonna happen for people that are in their 40s and, and 30s and stuff like that but this is the new generation that's coming up. Coming in. We are really in. Yeah. Coming in. Yeah. Coming, coming up. Right. Coming in. Coming in, coming up, and, and you know, and everything. It's just, I really, you know, you have my sympathy. Right. I don't know what you guys are going to do. Well, yeah. Jim, let me, if, if, I, mean, I, I mean, if, if I'm going to guess, like, if you'll crystal ball, between all of the homeowners associations that are going to be in and out for our battles, between congressmen who probably will become informed about it, right? But October 1st, is it? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have confidence that the Congress is going to do something in less than mm -hmm. what? Well, yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah. it, 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 in the short, it's really probably in the long term, there might be a solution. But in the short term, we're really in a vice. You know, really in a vice. You are, because, I mean, like you say, you have to turn this information in by January 1st. Yeah. And, I mean, by all of our water, it's got to be there. Uh, regardless of what takes place, the rest of the world, you know, the rest of our country, uh, which obviously, you know, you could have changed this all different directions, but uh, could even get, could get worse, could get better, who knows? But uh, uh, I, again, I think I went 
pure sympathy. I, I feel so sorry. If we uh, if we go early, maybe we get one of those country club prisons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should get white collar. Yeah, the white collar. Yeah, let's get a prison. 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 Yeah, let's get Okay, motion. I make a motion to enter into a contract with Citywide Facility Solutions to complete the janitorial work in the clubhouse and guardhouse for a monthly cost of $3,403. The rationale is, and thank you for preparing this, Heather, <laughs> hiring a cleaning service to complete the janitori janitorial work in the clubhouse costs less than a full-time employee and ensures it is completed timely. Of the four quotes obtained, Citywide offers the best services for a lower price. In our board packets, Heather enclosed um, the three companies that she interviewed and very thorough estimates. Okay, I will second Motion. it. Okay. Discussion? Any discussion? Could we go over the yeah. detail, yeah. what it would be tell for the so, community on exactly what's going to be clean? Yeah. Uh, Heather, that was one of my questions. The, what's it, city? What is it? Citywide. This Citywide. Is Citywide gave you a, a quote for seven days a week cleaning, but they don't say what they're going to do in each, each of those days, like some of the other bits, or did you get it, more It actually does say that if it you does? scroll down. Yeah. It's all there. Um, it says each room what they're going to do daily, weekly, monthly. But it's not checked. There's <clears throat> nothing checked on each day of the week. You're looking at someone else's. Um, oh no, that's the right one. That's the right Brady one. Brady desk. I assume there's checkbox there, so they would check which ones are going to do each day. Yes, I have the hard copy if you want to look at it because that is checked. Oh, I don't okay. know why the electronic copy is not. But yeah, what, what, else, what else, you know, discussing, you know, exactly which waste paper yeah. basket's going to be picked up. No, I don't want to go there. I just want to make sure we know they, they're committed. Well, the way they have it actually is they have what the daily first, then the weekly, the and then monthly. Plan. So they didn't check each day, no, but they're saying daily, weekly, monthly is broken oh, out. Okay. I see. I mean, but if we share that with the community, what areas are going to be clean and how often? It's the whole clubhouse. So as you walk, we walked the clubhouse with all four companies that came out. Mark and I walked with them room to room to room. Um, obviously something like the fitness, fitness center that gets used daily needs to be cleaned daily. Something like the library, nobody goes in there that often so that would be something that's cleaned weekly. Um, the office staff is there five days a week. You won't have to go in there on the weekends. Um, so it's those types of adjustments they've made. But bathrooms inside and out, the cabana bathrooms included, would be all seven days as well. So Heather and Mark will oversee this yes. at the board once we sign the contract. Correct. We're gonna offload it to Heather to make sure the job is being done properly. If it's not, she'll come back to us and say, hey, listen, we have a contract with these people. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. And then we would pick it up from there. But in the meantime, it's all yours. <laughs> and, and just to uh, expand a little bit, does that include the uh, changing rooms to the pools and the guardhouse, I think? Yes. So the entire facility? Correct. Just, I'm really not asking a question. <laughs> so another question, what happens when uh, something needs cleaning not on the schedule? Do you handle that in-house or you hire yes. them? Yes, that's why we have the three maintenance staff. Okay. So if there's you know an accident in the bathroom or yeah. you know things like that that like to pop up, yes, they would handle that themselves. And the cost on this is what compared to a full time person? It's about ten thousand dollars less a year than having a full time employee. And you have to pay benefits to a full time employee. Yeah. Is that going to affect any of the staff that's working here now? No. No. Oh, okay, so they're still safe with their jobs. Mm -hmm. Heather, I do have one question. Did you get the um, certificate? Yes, I did. I have the updated, updated one. And all that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, and they'll actually issue one in with Wellington yeah. once we sign the contract. Okay, good. Good. Okay, any further discussion? We're ready, uh, and I just want to point out that these people are bonded, so they, they're injured. They have their own insurance, correct? They have their own workers' coverage. <clears throat> 
Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, I think I have the second motion. The motion title is full-time maintenance technician. We have a part-time person right now. Correct, Kevin? But we have a part-time position. position. We don't actually right. have a person. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> we left in the wind. Anyway, so the motion is to make a motion to make a part-time maintenance position a full-time position. And the rationale is with the hiring of a cleaning service, removal of the janitorial staff position, making this position full-time covers the duties left by the removed janitorial position. <coughs> As Heather was pointing out. I'll second. Discussion? No. No discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're done. Motion for adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.